I don't even think people understand how big of an update this actually is. First and foremost, we haven't got anything this big since season 20 with the perk changes, getting blue shield, getting purple shield, and choosing the variants of the way that you want your character to change. That was a pretty big update, I'm not going to lie. But compared to this, that update makes it look small. Like to put in perspective, the game going into tomorrow, being season 22, should feel more like a brand new game than it has felt since launch. And there's a lot of reasons why I say that. There's a lot of quality live changes, a lot of legend changes, there's a new map coming out, which in my opinion looks like it's going to be the elite map, the number one map that a lot of people are going to like. But for the majority of the reason, the fights should feel different. No flinching and aim assist nerf. That is huge. Now just a quality... Just to talk about it, new map, E-District, this map looks incredible. It's the first nighttime map, and I'm, I'm a huge fan of nighttime maps. Not many games incorporate into their game, but nighttime, from the gameplay that I've seen, because I have yet to test it out, the gameplay that I've seen, the lighting looks so good that there's no area in the map where you feel like this is too dark or anything, or vice versa. There's 17 POIs. It's got a good amount of area to be into. It's a very big map. There's a lot of high ground. There's a lot of building fights. There's a lot of things that are going down. So it's a very, not too much open area. It's very much World's Edge-like in the sense that that's the reason why people like that map so much is it's a lot of building situations and you don't have to worry so much about crossing an open field with Caustic or something. Now the map rotations going into the next season is going to be Broken Moon, E-District, Storm Point. I think... I'm okay with that. I would have preferred E-District Storm Point and World's Edge, but I understand that they're trying to steer people away from World's Edge because it, it has been in rotation for who knows how long. I mean, yes, it, it comes and leaves, but like in, as far as competitive scene, like it is nothing that we like. We see it 24/7. The competitive scene. It's that and Storm Point. Like that's the two maps that they just use back and forth, back and forth. So for me personally, Storm Point is my favorite ranked map to play in. Not my favorite map in general. My favorite map in general is World's Edge. So, it's going to be different, but I, I really have strong hopes for E-District. I think that's going to be good. But moving on from that, the first very strong change is going to be the new class perks. Uh, only two people got new class perks, the Recon and the Controller players. So, anyone who's Controller, as being Caustic, Watson, Rampart, and Catalyst are going to have this change. Um, the fact that they are going to have 25 HP when they're in zone, so it's going to be an overshield. So if you land in zone, the zone closes, you, you get your first dosage. Like if you're dropping onto an area and it's in zone, you're going to have blue shield while the rest of your teammates and the rest of your enemies, unless they're controller legends as well, are going to have white shield. This is something that just goes added on to it. It's pretty bizarre, to be honest with you. So essentially what they're doing is they're just capitalizing on... Controller legends are mainly supposed to be playing in zone they're waiting for you to rotate into them they're very much building camp legends so it makes sense why they're doing this change uh the fact that you're not going to be going over red is nice so you're not going to have 250 health this is going to stay at 225 when you have red which is great i would have been awful if they did it the other way around any huge quality of life change is the fact that you can remotely pick up fences or caustic traps or rampart walls through your LOS, like it, you have to be, I think, 75 meters away for you to not pick it up, but you just have to look at it and recall it and it's back. So there's been many times where you're rotating in a zone and you you lock up an area and the second you, uh, you lock up that area, maybe even five, 10 seconds later, you decide to dip and rotate into this other area that looks clear. You don't have to go up to your trap and pick all them up because the cooldown on that is very long. So if you if you go into the new area, you're only gonna be able to put down like one trap. Now you can just recall them and put down all the same traps you just put recently. Now, again, I haven't play tested yet, but Threat Vision looks amazing. Um, I'm still a little iffy on it because it looks like Bloodhound's, how it looked like with Bloodhound in his ult, where he would see enemies red. And so it, they had to be close enough. I understand that they had to be like, you have to aim down sight for them to see that. But at the end of the day, it does make the game easier for, th for Recon Legends, being Bloodhound, being. Uh, Crypto, Seer, and I can't think of the other one. Fantasy, that's who I was thinking of. <clears throat> it's it's different. It's For me, it just looks like they're trying to make the game easier for newcomers, which makes sense because the game's been up for five years, right? And so if you're getting into the game for the first time, there's so many people that have developed a strong skill in this game where it's not going to be an easy adjustment for you to get in here. 
Now that's also where skill ba skill based matchmaking should get adjusted more than this should be in my opinion. Uh, they claim that they're working on that, but we have yet to see any changes. Another nice quality of life change is the server beacons. Uh, now it's going to take only three seconds instead of seven point five seconds. There's been several times when you're halfway up, getting the scan, the scan, you start getting shot, and you're stuck in that animation. You could let go. You're stuck in the animation for a solid second or two, and if the player that's shooting you is a decent human being. They're going to knock you. It's just, it's just very annoying. So that's why either you have a Gibby bubble or Bangler smoke to cover you while you do so. It's a risky to do. But now that th that more than half of the duration is getting, you're getting shot down like 65% of the time. That should help. But the difference is you're only gonna have 500 meters instead of scanning the entire map. Um, but there's gonna be a lot more of them. So you, you go through the map. There's gonna be a lot more of them. And then now it's a three pulls every 15 seconds. So you can even see where teams are rotating instead of just getting one image direct there for like i think it was like up on your screen for 10 seconds you can see where everyone was at on the map now it's gonna be three pulses for 15 seconds you can see exactly where they're rotating it's it's a little different but in my opinion it's actually a nice quality of life change now this change i'm not like eh, it's whatever uh set tracks like you could now put crypto live tracks on bloodhound vice versa like you could just change banner cards to other people i thought it was nice that you that these people that these banners these trackers had their own like specific person it's different. I think people will like that. I'm not. It's whatever. It's not. It's not a big deal. Now here's a funny one. Um, I talked about this on one of my videos before. Uh, but the battle pass situation that was a rough one. EA and respawn try to go into a direction of making it ten dollars per split, and they divided. It. They changed it where there's two battle passes through a whole season, as well as like you know there was split one, split two for a season. They wanted a ten dollars for you to pay for that. It was a whole controversial thing. Pretty much they reverted it. They're going back to the old, old ways where you could actually play for it through your, um, the coins, of the, uh, the Apex coins. And so because of their apology, they're essentially giving the Battle Pass for free now. Now, not too much, honestly, really to talk about here. The care package, the Eve, Eva A returns on the floor. It's cool. It's got now the booster loader on it. So you're going to be able to reload faster uh, on a certain area of time of reloading, like two bullets left. And then when you reload, you're going to have an extra two bullets uh, in your slot due to the fact that you reloaded it during that time. The R99 is going to enter the care package, which is nice to see. I wonder how much that's going to increase, you know, damage uh, getting increased, the fall off damage range getting uh, decreased, improved recoil and stuff. Like the R99 has been literally non obsolete. I'd rather have an RE45 than an R99 uh, this season. It was awful. Didn't even touch that gun. So I'm glad to see the R99 return. It is my favorite gun to use uh, in the past. And it's. Nothing beats my opinion than one clipping someone with an R99. It's, it's beautiful gun to use. Now this is actually kind of shocking to see, to be honest with you. The Evo cash uh, spawn rate in the first wave increased 100%, was 50%. It means any care package that you see coming down is going to have an Evo cash in it, 100% guaranteed. Um, so whoever is your your best player or just whoever gets to it first, you know, get that cash, get that. Whoever will have the upgrade to the team that's going to improve the team the most, I would say. So if you have a lifeline, you get that purple, which would grant you getting uh, a gold knockdown, give it to her type of thing. Um, but she also even got a nerf too. She's not going to get Evo Cash in her uh, care package anymore. So that's going to be interesting. Now here's one of the biggest changes that they've dropped since launch. Aim Assist is actually finally getting nerfed, which is, which is wild and bizarre to say because I personally never thought I would see the day that this would be changed. Um, I just thought, I mean, I know that con that controllers have, the numbers of controllers and the, lo the players of keyboard and mouse have dropped. Like, I know that's the thing. Because I, myself, was a keyboard and mouse player, and I switched to controller. It's just simple. I mean, it, it, it was very, very overpowered. I didn't touch a controller on a video game since MW2, I would say. Like, I have not touched a controller on a game in forever. I've had my PC for so long, I haven't touched a controller in like 15 years. I plugged it in this season. The beginning of the season... I played a lot of pubs, and I think at a 0.6 KD. I'm a, I'm an average of a 1.6 KD guy, so my KD almost dropped a full one, like a full one. And I was like, maybe this isn't for me. I don't I don't see how this is so OP. I stuck through it. I gave it two weeks, and I'm ending the season with like a 1.2. The the amount of how great it is in a 1v1 up close compared to compared to keyboard and mouse. And that's with me having 15 years of experience on keyboard and mouse. Dude, it, it's nine day. Like controller is more fun in the sense that you just absolutely shred people up close. 
Now, I, I won't lie, the, the the distance fights are a little bit more heavy favored in the keyboard and mouse department. Um, the shield swapping, the looting, all that stuff is a lot more favored in the keyboard and mouse department. A lot of things are favored in the keyboard and mouse department, but you, when you come like, towards a game like Call of Duty, like Apex Legends, where majority of the fights are close combat range, a controller is going to outbeat a keyboard and mouse player nine out of ten times. Like, unless the controller player hasn't played in like 20 years, doesn't know what he's doing, and you have someone like zero on keyboard and mouse who is just a top tier keyboard and mouse player, just shred the guy. Like, the aim assist is just, was just that overpowered. But enough about that. It's getting 25% reduction from controller on PC. Console going into PC lobby is getting 22% decrease. I'm thinking the 3% is not getting knocked up because they won't be at like 140 frames, 160, 170, 100, 240 frames. And then console cost uh, cross is getting only reduced by 18. I could just the reason I'm seeing this like that percentage like not being as reduced, like I said, is just because they'll be only at 60 frames per second. So they're still at a significant disadvantage in that sense. Now, aim flinch, man. This is this is uh, you could agree with me or disagree with me. Aim flinch is very heavily favored towards keyboard and mouse players. Um, for, honestly, for both players, but like keyboard and mouse players, back it, is it was very annoying that like if you had that flinch, you that aim assist will still lock it into that person, but that flinch on keyboard and mouse, you have to adjust for that the second your show got knocked. And so the fact that that is getting absolutely completely destroyed unless you're in zone or like let's say like a uh, Newcastle alt lands on you, you're still gonna have that flat flinch for sure. But nine out of, like ten, pretty much ten out of ten times, you're not gonna get aim flinched. And to me, that's a keyboard and mouse buff, and a well, well, a well welcome buff. I don't know personally if I'm gonna jump back into keyboard and mouse. I played this whole season with it. I've had the most fun this season in a long time, it's probably since like season fifteen, and we're going into twenty two. It's been a long time since I've had fun in this game, man. Uh, this game is it was just very repetitive. Uh, and I kind of hit a threshold with my with my rank. I was just stuck D4 constantly. I'd make it a D2, go back to D4. Like, I, I just... Solo queuing in, in rank just was not fun for me at all. Now, this one is a different one for sure. It's a loop in reset. Um, if you got a low your team, this kind of doesn't really ma matter. Uh, I guess it depends where. But honestly, like, end, end game, people are dying. Like, you throw down a low ball, you're going to be fine. Uh, but if you have, like, if you're in a building and... There's a two or three pills right outside your building, and you are like destroyed on meds and destroyed on ammo. You could jump down, it gets reset late in game, and you may be able to pick up a battery or two and a couple stacks of, of armor or not armor of ammo, and that may help you. It's cool, it's it's different, you know, it gets re rolled too, so it's different. The mythical bin ones are pretty cool. That one's actually very decent, it's very much a care package weapon. Um, there's two different ones that you could get. And I, I just think it's it's definitely a different change. So I think anything like that, like change like that is always nice to have. Um, some people hate change. Some people love change. I'm 50-50. I'm um, this one as well looks really good. Like if you just look at the image of it, like having the healings all in one slot up top is, is going to be nice. My muscle memory for a shell swap is down here. So now that's going to have to r rotate back to being up top. So that's going to take about probably a week to get used to. Armor swaps will be a little bit slower for the meantime. Um... And then this is a very nice quality life change, man. Mantling at the same time, dude. If you go back and you just watch the Imperial Hal and Jen Burn clip of them trying to mantle at the same time as comedy, uh, Hal at the moment didn't think it was because he smashed his controller and broke his controller, but this was an annoying problem to go with. You would try to climb at the same time. Like, you, of course, you want to climb at the same time and, like, peak at the same time. So, like, both, you don't just go, you don't take on a person 1v1 each time. And so you would honestly, like, essentially pull on the person's leg and one person would make it and one person wouldn't, and it was terrible. And I'm glad they finally fixed that. So that's a good, nice quality life change right there. Better ammo awareness and feedback. They actually made a perk, Battle Sense for Imperial Hell. That's insane. So, I mean, this is cool. It's different. It's just like, it's, you know, you've always been notified that you have zero ammo or you're low in ammo. They're just pretty much allowing it sooner. Um, That's about it. Enemy health bars, the people are liking this and hating it at the same time. I'm whatever about it. Um, it's going to in the highest better call outs instead of saying he's one and you shoot the guy for 50 HP and he has yet to be knocked. You could say like half health. You could say uh, blue show, like one blue show left. You could, There's so many different calls you could say because you're going to have his, his exact health. So that depends on the person making the call out to actually make the correct call out. But now you're going to have a lot more information to make that correct call because you're going to see exactly what his health bar is 
and it's it's going to require you to crack them, and you you gotta have you gotta have direct line of sight to do so. So it's not gonna be crazy overpowered, but it's gonna be nice. It's, it's a different change. It's I'm I'm like whatever about it. It doesn't really matter to me, but it's also we'll see how it is. And if it's too overpowered or too annoying, it's gonna take respawn like six months to take out the game if they get a lot of hate for it. So it, it's gonna be here for a while. <laughs> um, enemy highlights again, same thing. Like you cr you crack someone, you're gonna see their their highlight of the red outline. Um, this, to me, in my opinion, just makes the game easier for noobs. I think that they're trying to... Anyone who is coming from the game for the first time, this is going to be a quality of life change for them. It's going to be something that's going to help them. I, I think it's just making the game easier, and I'm not the biggest fan of that, but you know, time will tell. Now, <clears throat> they tried to nerf the Havoc this season, or last season, uh, by dropping the mag size by four each, each mag. And it did make a difference for sure. You couldn't like pretty much one clip an entire team. Now you can only knock two with a with a gold mag. But now they're even going a step further. They are. I mean, if you go further down, I already read the whole patch notes. But if you go down further, the havoc is getting reduced in the hip fire department. Also, energy ammo reduce re the spawn rate. So it's gonna be harder to find energy ammo. It's gonna be easier to find li light and heavy, and then shotgun is about to be the same thing. Like it's a little bit more. So it's. The, the Havoc, L-Star, and um, the Volt are going to get a small nerf in that department. Not physically, uh, but just the fact that if you don't have ammo, you can't even shoot your gun. So it's going to be harder to find. And then also that, but like your, your stack, it was 60 in, in, in your bag. Now it's 54. And the light, the light mag went up and the shotgun went up. So they're, they're trying to take a heavy shot at the energy ammo. I have a friend of mine who is absolutely going to hate this nerf. I know I have a couple friends of mine, but specifically one that I play with on a consistent basis. He is going to absolutely hate this. Disruptor rounds removed from the loot pool. Um, that's huge. Uh, the alternator is going to kind of get a solid nerf on that. The alternator was a really, really good gun because of the disruptor rounds. Now that being is gone, is I don't see anyone using the alternator anymore unless they're just a big fanboy of that gun. But a new hop up is going in the gun shield generator. So it's pretty much like a Gibby shield for, for the LMGs. So for your Spitfire, Rampage, L Star, and Devotion, like every single one of these guns is going to have it, which is insane. Devotion, if it's still in the care package, that is busted. Um, but regardless, uh, LMGs are getting a big nerf. I mean, they get a big buff in that situation because I'm, I'm be honest with you. If I picked up, I didn't pick up any of these guns unless it was a Devotion in the care package. L Star, not a big fan. Rampage, not a big fan. Spitfire has been good since like season eight. I would say. So it hasn't been good in a long time, in my opinion. Ever since they went to light ammo on that gun, it has not been good. Um, so when you aim down the sights, you're going to get a, a, a gun shield, just like Gibby's is. It's going to have 40 damage. And uh, if you ha if you already have a Gibby gun, you're going to have now 75 damage. That's crazy. That's a, that's a crazy, crazy buff to also Gibby himself. Now, I know a lot of people are big fans of this and like super, super hyped up about this, which I, I get the hype, but I also don't get the hype. You now have a Kimbo. P2020s in Mozambique's. Cool. You know, like, there's not much to say for me about it. I mean, you can now dual wield two, two of them. Um, so it's gonna obviously going to give up more damage. It's going to make both those guns more obsolete because they both were absolute trash. Mozambique had its time to shine from time to time, but, like, the B-2020, you never saw anyone pick up that gun, ever. So now that you could Kimbo them, it's going to be a different change. It's going to be nice. They're going to be Kimbo. It's cool. I think it's going to be fun more than anything else. Do I see myself using them, though? Probably not. Um, it depends. Obviously, like I have to play test it. If anything, the Mozambiques will be the ones I'll be play testing or using over the P2020s. Um, but yeah, this is something that I don't see myself using whatsoever. And as far as LMGs go, whoa, all LMGs now benefit for the reverse hipfire mechanic found in the care package devotion. I don't know if you guys use the devotion this season. I don't know if you have played this season because I don't blame you. Apex has been very boring for a few seasons now but the devotion this season because this was my controller season i actually enjoyed the game for the first time in a long time the devotion hip fire was disgusting absolutely disgusting there was no need to like aim it in you get in front of someone just hit fire and let it do its job it, you're most like you could wipe a team easily with the devotion so the fact that all the lunches are now getting that i could see the lsr being very 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 strong i could see the swift fire being very strong now with the perk above with the gun shield and now that, wow, okay. LMGs may make an actual appearance in the game.
And I see that they understand that the alternator is getting a fat nerve, so they're trying to increase the, gun, the uh, magazine size by one, but I promise you that's not doing much. The car size is going up plus one, which is nice because that was the biggest reason I didn't really use the gun was that it would just farm too fast out of it. Uh, devotion care package, empty reloads. Wait, oh, so it's so saying the care package. And it's getting the gun show. Gen nah, dude, the devotion is going to be like, if you don't pick it up, you're just, you're just throwing your game if you see one. Um, reverse fire improved shots needed to maximize it reduced by 14 was 21 flatline's getting an upgrade in the fact that it's getting a plus one that's nice havoc is getting the hit fire accuracy uh significantly reduced not clean obviously i'm a big havoc fan but that the gun needs a nerf it, it really does i'm i'm accepting i'm okay with going to the vault hemlock um i've seen gameplay looks exactly the same uh, if you're a big hemlock fan i wouldn't worry too much about it the only thing is maybe the burst delay by like a half a second besides that like the, the damage reduction obviously is going to be a hit but like not crazy p2020 single they're getting a buff 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 mastiff <clears throat> that's another thing the mastiff and the peacekeeper are nice are getting a nice uh quality life change both guns are getting a pellet uh how do I say this? A pellet pattern change where you should stop getting like those, those nines. You should like, it's a, it's, you go wait three, six, seven, eight, you go from eight to six. So it's a smaller spread, which should act instead of getting those nines or 18s or whatever you get, you should actually have some solid 30, 40s. If you actually in this, in the aim department of the person, um, it just looks like a better spread. So you should have more consistency with the shotgun, which is a very strong life quality change. I'm not going to lie. I haven't used a, a peacekeeper. Peacekeeper is one of my favorite guns. I haven't used a peacekeeper in a long time due to the fact of that. It was just annoying to get nines consistently. Um, our 301 is getting a nice little improvement, th a plus three to each magazine size. Our 301 still, if they don't improve the damage rate to it, it's still going to be, in my opinion, not, the, not a great gun. Uh, Flyline and Hemlock just overpower it any day of the week. RE45 is going uh, up again as well. Rampage increased uh, projected size while revved up. Wow. That's interesting. Um, let's see. Class changes. That's already what we saw before. They're getting changed. Alter. Okay, so these are legend changes. Alter channel time with when knock decreased to two seconds. Okay, so our portal is going to be better. It's going to be faster. You don't have to look when you're knocked anymore. To go back, you just have to hit your, your hotkey, whatever it is. And her ultimate reduction gets down by 30 seconds. That's nice. And the travel speed is going up 40%, which I thought the travel speed was fine. It's just going to be like lightning fast these days. And then her portal is going to close faster as well. That's interesting. Nice quality life changes for her, for sure. Um, I know Classic has now green traps instead of green and red. So you could tell if they're, they're enemies or if they're not, which is great. And Alter now will be able to see ring consoles, which I'm not a fan of because I think you should have to play Control Legends to get that. But that's just my opinion. Um, and if you made this far in the video, guys, I really just want to say I appreciate it uh, for sticking in. I know I'm just rambling a lot, but this is a huge change. Crypto is getting a massive, massive change. It's kind of a little too much to go over the fact that off the grid, he now becomes invisible, which is crazy. He now, if you EMP someone, he, that's a, it's a technical scan for them. They'll be scanned for four seconds and we'll, we'll go through walls. Uh, his his handling kit's going to be better. I think crypto for, I think, gold and under, you're going to see a lot more of. I still think for people that are diamond and more, like crypto, you have to be, especially for Solo King, you have to be very corporated well with your team with that. You're going to be a little bit further back with your team. I still don't see crypto um being so being too too relevant in that situation just because ugh, the crypto is it, it's a hit or miss for him man you have to have your drone to have any anything come from that guy it's all based on the drone the drone has like a 40 second cooldown if you get if it gets destroyed besides that then he's just he's just kind of just like a, a kid with no abilities um he can pick up banners but just, i don't know just everything with him is through the drone and to me like if that gets shot down you're just nothing and for me that makes him like bottom tier i'm gonna have to see how this these changes come but at the end of the day like if you want to try to excel crypto in a higher rank i think you're just gonna have to eat the emp damage with your teammates getting stunned and while you're pushing a team because otherwise Going, uh, allowing your team to go in two v three with crypto just doesn't make sense to me. And oh, look at his! I didn't even see this. His drone cooldown is now thirty seconds instead of forty seconds, which is it's nice. Lifeline not getting evil cash anymore, so she's not gonna be able to get red when she gets her gold knock is nice. 
Sheila's going to get improved. She's going to regen uh, ammo back slowly if it's not used. If it's used and then you didn't use it all, it's going to slowly regen um, stuff back. Sierra's getting a small buff in the sense where his his um, change, like you have a different like level now. It was this. 1.5 second duration, now it's one tag. You get plus one tag in 50 seconds. So you have pretty much two scans now, uh, which is going to be interesting. Vantage is getting a nice buff uh, with her her bird or her whatever it is that launches her. And then not only that, but like you could also now click the reload button where you're sniping and it'll use an all excel. And so her all excel is not going to be uh, using 2.5 times more shots than just two points. So you're pretty much going to get almost like all your shots back if you have an all excel, which is going to be really, really nice. But you have to get that perk upgrade as well. And then Watson, this is what I'm actually looking for them, looking forward to the most for some reason. I'm a big Watson fan. I love Watson. I think she's not probably the most fun to play, but as far as ranked and the skill sailing for her is really, really fun to me. Um, she's getting a nice, strong change. Uh, this, this past season, she actually got a hidden buff for her or pilot, like she would regenerate shields faster, um, which was nice. But now she's getting a new thing where she doubles her all HP and then her all shield generator recharges. So that her power pylon now can it, essentially, if you're playing in zone, you're you're like peeking with like a G7 scout or a sniper or something like that. You get hit, you get shot. You you go back in to reshield your health. Um, that thing, that generator would never recharge itself back up. Now you pretty much have unlimited shields if you don't take damage too fast. Um, but if you do, if you're like in a fight in your tough situation, there's another thing called emergency power and you pretty much get, I've seen people already compare this, you pretty much get it to like uh, conduit's Q, like how fast it actually recharges the shield. It's very, very fast. Essentially you slap the thing down and pop one cell, you could pretty much get your red shield back up like that fast and then just go again. So she can now actually somewhat be an aggressive Controller Legend. But yeah, that pretty much wraps it up for my thing. Like I said, pubs are going to be Brook Moon, E District, and Storm Point. Uh, 17 POIs for the new district. is an urban line district city. It's going to be such a nice quality change that I think that we're going to need. Uh, it's going to be the exclusive map. E District is going to be the exclusive map for the first... Uh, let me see. What's, what today is after the six? So yeah, it's going to be for the first week. It's going to be the exclusive map. And then it's going to enter ranked for 72 hours after launch. So yeah, it's going to be pretty much the only thing you're going to be able to play for the first three days when the, when the game first comes out. And then uh, get, a lot of pe get people adjusted to it, get people liking it. And then there's obviously just quality of life changes everywhere else. But um, yeah, that's going to do it for just the majority of like the strong, strong changes. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys stuck around this much, give it a thumbs up. I'd appreciate it. And you guys have a blessed day.